So several of you have asked me uh, how I make my videos. And I'm going to tell you today because I get a lot of emails asking me and then I can refer everybody who asks to this particular video. So I'm not really that picky about the videos that I make. Originally I started making them for my students uh, who would come for lessons sometimes from far away once a month and then I would make these videos for them so they could refer to them so they wouldn't have to travel eight hours from Nashville or other parts of the southeast coast uh, for a month and they'd have some sort of reference. So I did that probably around 11 years ago. I started doing some drum set videos for them and then that morphed into videos of my books and then basically I started teaching a lot of Skype lessons and so I did supplemental videos for those folks and now I've been kind of making lots and lots of videos I think for everybody <laughs> so it just kind of developed into that kind of thing I really enjoy it I'm trying to do it now while I still have uh, several years left of being able to play pretty well as you get older it gets harder to do some of the things that I've been doing my whole life so I'm hoping to kind of document my my stuff before you know I get too old to do it the other thing that helps me with is that I can always refer my college students to these videos so they can learn from them as well as my modern Skype students and really anyone else who asks me questions I could say well you know go take a look at this video and you know you can see what's happening how I do it even if I show them something in a lesson they may not catch it all and this way they can you know go back and play it as many times as they need to to get the idea of what I'm doing so like I said today what I'm going to do is just talk about how I do it which is very simple there's no production whatsoever going into these I don't have a crew I don't have special room or lighting I do it very simple so I could keep it going uh, do it fast there's no edits. Uh, the only time I cut away is when I want to show a different view or when I put a graphic up there. So sometimes I make mistakes, but you know I just leave them up there. I don't really care. Uh, they're not big mistakes, and people get the idea. So I'm not really putting this up there to be something that's going to be widely distributed. It just so happens that you know some of them, a lot of people watch. So the first thing I started with was a regular camcorder back in the day, something cheap, something I used to record my kids with as they were growing up. And this is before high def was really popular. So I had a regular standard camcorder. If you go back to those first videos, they will not be in high def because of that. And then I got a, a Canon D70 camera, which I really love. I had two of them, but one has recently died on me. Uh, but the one I have left is a good camera because I can interchange lenses, which is important for what you know I do here because I'm doing lots of different instruments. So if I'm doing a big drum set, I can use a wide angle lens. And if I'm doing something close up, I can put a different lens on there. Uh, so it's really great to be able to do that. And of course, the quality of those cameras and those lenses is second to none. So this camera is an older camera. It's probably about, I don't know, five or six years old, but I'm too cheap right now with the pandemic and everything to buy a new one. Eventually I will. Uh, and this camera serves its purpose. The only thing about it is the sound is terrible on it, so I would never do that. And to capture drums, drumming, any kind of percussion is really one of the most challenging things for any audio system and microphone to do. So what I do is I have a separate camcorder that I use that's an older uh, Canon camcorder and that has some XLR inputs and what I'll do is just run the microphone into a really good preamp. The preamps I use are Great River preamps or Grace preamps. And those are really good preamps and I run that directly into those inputs on that camera and 
even if I'm not using that camera for video, which I do, that's my close shot, by the way. When you see the shot behind me, that's that Canon camcorder with the XLRs. That's kind of my mix down machine. And all I do is put those uh, two camera shots up in my video editor and I line them up and that's it. So I'm not really mixing any audio. Now the, I use one mic normally, uh, which is a really great mic, probably one of the greatest mics ever made. It's an AKG C24 stereo mic. And that's probably why things sound so good because that mic is just insane the way it sounds. Uh, so that's what I use there. And with that Grace or Great River preamp, it sounds pretty good. Now, every once in a while, I will use a bass drum mic. And if I do that, I'll do a sub mix, uh, three channels into two channels. And I, I just, just use maybe an API mixer for that that I have. That's basically a one rack mount unit that I can mix several channels into. But that's really the only time I do it for all the jazz videos. It's just one mic. So that makes things really, really simple. And I can do it really fast. There's not a lot of editing. Now, some of you have said you can't hear me well enough when I talk, when I do these. I would suggest wearing headphones. Uh, I can hear myself fine. Again, these are not really meant to be sitting, you know, in traffic and watching or they're meant to be studied. These are lessons. So, you know, the entertainment value of them is probably pretty low when you compare it against most things on YouTube. But these are lessons for people who are serious about playing the instrument. So I would suggest wearing, uh, wearing some good noise, reducing headphones and, and watching the video like that, either with your phone or on the computer. I could wear a lavalier mic. I have tried that. The problem with the lavalier mic is most of them are terrible and none of them can handle the SPL of a full drum kit, let alone some of these other percussion instruments that I use. They'll distort. And what happens then is I have to go in there and edit the audio. So every time I'm playing, I have to take out that lavalier mic, which is just would take forever. Like if I did one of my massive two hour videos and did that, it would take me six or seven hours and I'm just not going to do that. But again, my goal here for my channel is to have the drums represented like you were in the room with me. If you were right here alongside of me, like when my students watch me play, they're standing right next to me and they can hear and see everything. So that's the goal of this, not to make it sound like some produced, compressed, EQ'd production. I know there's a lot of stuff like that on YouTube, but that's not what I do here. All right. So that's how I do that with the one mic. And then, like I said, I have a video editor that's very cheap and basic. I put everything in there. I can just do some graphics that I've scanned for my books, pop them in there. And then you have sort of a basic primitive presentation that you can look at and hopefully get the idea of what's going on. And hopefully you have the books, because that's why I'm doing these, because most people have the books. I've sell, sold thousands of copies of these books. So I know a lot of you watching have them, and that helps a great deal, because you can look at the book, practice it, then look at the video and see if it's you know going OK, and then listen to it, because the book comes with over 300 recordings that go with that book, so you can listen to those too. The whole idea is to give you a full learning experience. So if you can't be here in person, with which most of you can't, then you're kind of getting the lessons that I give in that kind of way. So I can't really think of anything else I could tell you as far as uh, production values. It's so simple. Recently, I have been using a foot video camera. It's actually the original camcorder that I started with, <laughs> uh, which is fine. I put it on a wide, wide angle. Uh, lens that I got that screws right on there. And you can see my feet now. It's pretty primitive, not really great high def or anything. But you can see what's going on. That's what's important. And again, all I have to do is line up that audio, which is terrible as well, coming from that camera. And then I can just sit there and hit a button and switch between cameras when I think something's going on interesting. Now, I think all of you should try to make videos and audio of your playing. I'm not saying you can put it on YouTube, you, you can, 
and I would, even if it's unlisted, could do that. A lot of my students, I have them do videos unlisted uh, because that means everybody can watch them if you send them a link. If it's private and you send someone a link, they won't be able to watch it. But if it's unlisted, you could send them a link and they could see it. So my students send me links from YouTube that are unlisted and then I get to see them play and how they're going, you know, how it's going with their lessons. And then I write them back, you know, do this, do that, or this looks great, keep going. And then sometimes it comes out so good, I say, hey, you know, maybe put this up there, have a channel, and uh, this is great, you know, you need to do that. So it's really good. I think YouTube is a really great thing. I'm not really into social media. I don't do Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. Uh, not because I have anything against it, I just don't have time to do it. So. You know, what I do, though, is is the YouTube, YouTube because I think it's just a great format. There's a lot of obviously stupid stuff on there, but there's a lot of unbelievable stuff on there, especially the old videos that guys have put up with the great drummers from, you know, who have passed away. Guys who I saw growing up in New York, who everybody now can see for free, which is just a miracle. It's amazing. And, you know, you get to see these geniuses play. Uh, which is just fantastic, the, uh, the greatest learning experience. And I use YouTube to teach. I'll have videos that I refer my students to, all kinds of marimba videos and drum set stuff and all kinds of things that I think are really good. So it's a, it's a great format. So you can try to do uh, videos with even an iPhone. The video on some of these new iPhones is amazing. And the audio isn't bad either. Sometimes for the drums it's a little too much. So you could do your separate um, audio for that. But really, the iPhones, the, the newer ones, are tremendous. Video-wise, they're as good as anything I have. Uh, so I may just eventually get one of those. I use an Android phone, but I may get an iPhone eventually and just use that for my videos when, when this camera dies. So anyway, keep the questions coming. If I missed something, which I'm sure I did, just send me some more emails and I'll try to maybe elaborate again.